Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? I have uh, no complaints. We have a great Ohio State win. And yes, I, I don't want to hear anyone suggest otherwise. Yeah, I, yeah, I do cool. not want to hear anyone suggest otherwise. Ohio yeah. State looked bad. Ohio State looked sloppy. CJ Stroud didn't uh, perform to 100% for the entire football game. Ohio State really only scored 14 points. Who who the hell? Who the hell said that? And I don't want to hear the reasoning, Michigan fans. I, well, okay, there, there's there's your stores. Offense <laughs> was terrible. They only scored 54 points. Exactly. A Michigan fan. Yeah. yeah so 50, who cares what they say? 54 to 10 against one of the best defenses in college football here. And and we saw and we saw it firsthand. Like uh, I gotta find the the stats here real quick, Jared. But the first half stats. Not, not that great. It was not all that great here. So if I look at the um, halftime scores, whoops, this one here, halftime scores, Ohio State had 133 offensive yards, but was up 26 to 10. A, a defensive touchdown is always helpful, but then again, they both had defensive touchdowns. So defensive <laughs> touchdowns, but also just the defense just playing lights out here and we'll cover that here shortly, but defense playing lights out, even, even, with pick the slow start, even with the slow start that the offense had, and they picked up in the third and beginning of the fourth quarter where they scored 28 points in the second half there. Yeah. It's, it just, it not the, not the type of offense we are used to seeing this year where we're used to seeing Ohio state, 500 600 yards of total offense and in in a way it was kind of kind of good that Ohio State when they when they couldn't get those first downs they couldn't get those touchdowns in the red zone they found other ways to get the ball into better uh, field field position to get other touchdowns and all that too it's it, it's great that to see that Ohio State overall from what I've seen so far this year has a pretty complete team. And and we got to we got to finally see Ohio State going up against a tough defense. We didn't really get to see that all this year where it was okay, they played Notre Dame a pretty good defense and they took care of business there. Then after that is Toledo, Arkansas State, Rutgers, all of that and finally finally got to see them go up against a really good defense and yeah, and we'll, we'll we'll critique them here shortly. Yeah, and there's there's definitely areas to improve, but overall, I'm very happy with this win. Anytime you you give um, Iowa uh, their worst defeat in how many years, decades, decades, their worst defeat, you you gotta feel pretty good. This is Kyle already said this, but it needs to be said again, and it probably won't be the last. This is legitimately one of the best defenses in college football. Do not let Iowa's record fool you. Don't let the fact that they're Iowa fool you because a lot of people just kind of want to be like, oh, they're big and slow and blah, 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 blah. No, this is an athletic defense. They're also a big, tough defense. And let's really keep in mind here that this is a great defensive line that they played against. Um, they got away with a lot of holding. Ugh, yeah, they... There was probably happened. some defensive holdings and some uh, some bumps past five yards that probably could have should have been called. I thought the uh, the only so, I mean, you know, sometimes you get those calls. Sometimes you don't. They really should have got that pass interference. I think it was ended, what, Ohio State's second field goal in the first quarter. There was a uh, yeah, the missed P.I. in the corner. I'm just trying to remember specifically which drive it was. Um, yeah, but like that happens and you, you just have to, you just have to deal. Um, you're not always going to get those calls. You're just, you're just not. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So even, even though, even though Ohio state only had 133 offensive yards in the first half, 230 in the second half, about, about doubling what they did in the first half and CG Stroud finally finding his groove in that second half and made some great, great throws and some 
even better catches by those uh, stellar wide receivers. Yeah, exactly. They had us in the first half, not going to lie. <laughs> but they yeah, didn't. Exactly. But they yeah. didn't. Ohio State played incredibly well. Incredibly both, well. And both halves. And when you look at it, Jared, and when you look at both it, both halves. Because they were have... still scoring points. At, I, I get it, like in the red zone, you, you want to get those touchdowns. But they still scored four times in the first quarter. Ohio State scored four times in the first okay. quarter yeah. against one of the best defenses in college football. Yes, you need to make those field goals into touchdowns. Yes, but this is, again, one of the best defenses in college football. This, unless, unless Ohio State picks up Georgia at some point in the postseason, unless that happens, Ohio State just played the best defense that they will play all year, and it's not even close. Yep. The best Agreed. defense that Ohio State will play all year. The Horn Frogs, please. Stop the, it. But honestly, like the bet yeah. this is the unless they play Georgia, unless they meet Georgia at some point during the playoffs or a bowl game or something. This is the best defense Ohio State will play all year, period. Second place, not close. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you could make the argument for... You, you, uh, gangland, we're not going to play our own defense. Yeah, I mean, you could make the <laughs> argument for, for Michigan. Michigan has, a, has a, a good defense, but I don't think they... I think, I think when you compare the defenses, you got Iowa and Ohio State on their own pedestal in the Big Ten, and then... And then Michigan, and then others from there. And and we saw and we saw from this Ohio State defense just how great they are. Iowa only had one good offensive drive, and that got them three points. And, and that was one, one good offensive drive and only three points. Just let that. Just let that. Th yes, that was penalty was, assisted I, as well. Yes, and yes, it goes out with the saying. Yes, this was. A very, very, and I can't emphasize how very, how many times I can say very bad offense Iowa is. Like I mean, we talked it, we talked about it in our uh, preview show last week. Like we were, we were sitting here, like how many points can they realistically score? Unless, unless their defense, and at times it seemed like their defense really tried to bail them out. They, they set up their offense to. Uh, get points uh, with great field position or get defensive touchdowns. And, and we saw, and we saw that uh, in the first quarter there, we were like, uh Oh, they got a touchdown. Do they have any more in them? And uh, spoiler alert, they, they didn't. Yeah. Uh, Gangland says our defense is still better in total D and they played more cupcakes. Illinois is number one in total D and we are number two. What, what does Illinois what big advantage does Illinois and Ohio State have over Iowa in those statistics? Neither of those teams have played against Ohio State's offense. <laughs> and, and, and to a degree, I mean, yeah, degree, exactly. I mean, you can say you can say Michigan as well. I mean, I mean, a lot a lot of people do not want to talk about Michigan, and I mean, understand Ohio State hates Michigan, yada yada yada. Yes, absolutely. But guys, the. Michigan's offense is starting to look pretty good right now. Yeah. So, so Iowa, Iowa playing two pretty good offenses and um, they held Michigan down to, uh, no, I'm not a sympathizer. I'm being realistic. They held Michigan, they held Michigan to 27 points, at, but Ohio State uh, doubling that 54 points. I, you you got to feel you got to be feeling really good if you're a Buckeye player right or a Buckeye fan right now. Austin says it's just an offensive line and running back, which is good. McCarthy sucks. He's McCarthy doesn't suck. Um, mm -mm. I but he's not he's not win you a game off on his own back. Great. Yeah, no, he's not elite. No, McCarthy's mid. He's better than mid. He's better than mid, but. He's he's also like he's not he's not going to put an entire game on his back. Mm -hmm. Um he, he's he's just not. Uh, he's better than Petrus. Yes, uh yes, Zach. He is he, <laughs> that yeah. that's true. That is very true. I mean you you go 6 for 14 with two interceptions and 49 yards. It, 
yeah, it's it's hard to uh, not do worse than that. It's really hard. <laughs> so Gangland says Corum is going to be run down with how much they run him. That's an interesting thing to watch. Um, mm-hmm. I think Edwards yeah. is a good running back uh, as well. For what that's worth, maybe they should start sprinkling him in more. Um, yeah, Edwards is good. But yeah, anyway, we're not we're not talking about Michigan. Let's yep. let's um, get back here. So let's let's get to the let's get to the grades here, Jared. Ohio State fifty four to ten advantage three hundred sixty yards to Iowa's one hundred fifty nine six turnovers caused by this Buckeyes and Ohio State did have two turnovers in this game as well. So let's let's go ahead and grade the positions here, starting with the coaching as a whole. The coaching. From an A to an F, how would you grade the coaching staff, Jared? I I can't point to anything the coaches did and say bad. I, I thought the offensive scheme was fine. I think there there were execution issues. Um, I think that they did a great job with the halftime adjustments. Um Play calling was a C. No, I don't think that's true at all. I do not think that's true at all. I, I think if there were better blocking or um, some occasional better, ex- just like inches of execution difference, either by a quarterback or a wide receiver, I, I don't see an issue. I do not see an issue with the with the play calling, if I'm being honest with you. 10 in the box, let's run. Okay, like I think maybe that's a good point. Um. But I also don't think they had 10 in the box all that often. I think you're yeah. over simple. Who would, would, would you grade the coaching staff, Jared? Uh, I give them an A minus. If you want to do yeah, a B that, plus, I think that's also fine. Um, yeah, I, think, I think that's probably about the average one I'm seeing. I see a B plus, I see an A, I see a C. So, yeah, I think that average to about a B plus there. So, I, yeah. Gangland says give, they did I would it. Give an a minus, I would give an A minus as well, Jared. Yeah, there were. Well, hold on. This is a I, I, I really, I, gangland says they did it on third and short. I see he's talking about the uh, 10 in the box. Ryan Day needs, needs to give in those situations. Ryan Day needs to give CJ Stroud the green light to keep it when necessary. And a lot of people give Stroud crap for not running more. Guys, they didn't let Fields run either. At what point do you realize that it's not CJ making the decision? Yeah, I'd, I'd give the coaching staff an A, a minus as well. They, they made great um, halftime adjustments, and we, we saw they put up 28 points. Uh, then, it, then it settled for field goals in that second half there. Uh, I was really pleased with the at least the halftime adjustments, but definitely some iffy play calling here and there on the offense about how to run and cut and um run run blocking and all that. And yeah, a lot of it came down to execution, but uh, I mean you rewatch rewatch the game and there's definitely some things that the coaching staff should have picked up a little bit earlier. So with the coaching staff, um gonna split this to the offensive side. So offensive coaching. I would say I would say B overall. I would give the offensive coaching staff a B. It's their worst uh, offensive performance, at least from a yardage standpoint, all year. <laughs> but yet I, they still, but yet they still put up that many points here. Um, I I'm am a little concerned about the the running attack when it comes to very physical defensive linemen now. Now that we've seen Ohio State and how well they did not perform against a pretty good defensive line here. And it's, it's got some things that the offensive uh, coaching staff have things to work on. Kyle, they scored 54 points against one of the best defenses in college football. All right. But to be fair, Derek, but to be fair, how many, how many times did the defense set them up to um to get the ball in Iowa's territory? A lot, a lot of the time. I don't care. And they and they didn't. This this game could have been so much more. Like it could have been, it could have been seventies 
it really could have been the score could have been like 70 to 10. But they they struggled moving the ball um, when it got towards the red zone in that first half. They they settled for a lot of field goals. And yeah, me being nitpicky here, Jared, but I'm 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 calling it as it is in what Kyle, I'm seeing. What do we say? We grade based off of expectation, right? Uh-huh. What yeah. was your score prediction for this game? Yeah, I know. I know. What was your it score was 30, prediction? It was 31 to 10. You said 31. They scored 54. They exceeded your expectations by a lot. Yes. What what changed between when we did the show on on Thursday versus now? You well, knew then that this was an excellent defense and Ohio State was going to struggle a bit on the offense. We need to acknowledge that there's another team on the field, another team with strengths and weaknesses. They yeah, put 54 points on ex- the exactly, best exactly defense said, in yeah. college football, except maybe Georgia. It's exactly what Spike says here. Didn't expect six turnovers in this game here. Like if you, if you take it, you can never take away like, oh, if this if this didn't happen or if this happened and this would happen, you, you, you never know. But six turnovers, though, was the cause of Ohio State scoring that many points. If you if you were to take away even half of those. I I think that score would have been a lot closer to that 31 to 10 uh, prediction that I had here. But because they had those six turnovers there. You know they set the offense up so many times to score. Do I need to remind you, however, that they put the backups in on offense? Okay. Okay. Had it been 31, had it been 31 to 10 in the fourth quarter, did they put the backups in? No, they didn't. Just they didn't. I you're, you're being too hard. You're being too hard. You need to acknowledge that Iowa is a good football team. And they are, yes, and I acknowledge that, Jerry. Well, excuse we, me. They, what, excuse me. A good defense. They're not a good football team, but they're a good what, defense. Okay. What would you grade the offensive coaching then, Jared? A. There were execution issues, but I don't think that's on the coaches. All right. All right. We're going to move on. So I I see here. Uh, B, B minus, B minus grade here. So I think, I think chat's uh, agreeing with me here, Jared, but we're moving, but we're moving on. So let's move on to the quarterback, CJ Stroud, CJ Stroud, 20 for 30, 286 yards, four touchdowns and a interception that led to a touchdown. I believe this is his second pick six touchdown of the year. Was it that that was a fumble, wasn't it? Right? Oh, I'm sorry. That was a fumble. Yes, you were right. Yes, it was a fumble. I mean, it just he got hit. The ball came out. It could have been. But yes, but whatever. Um, Yeah. Who would you who would you grade CJ's performance here? I think he threw some ill advised throws at times. Um, I think that he was rattled in the first half. Um, I also think he was not getting the protection he's used to getting. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the offensive line next, but I, th- I feel like the interior of the offensive line, uh, had its worst game of the year. Um, the, I thought CJ Stroud played well, honestly. Um, I, I do think that again, they were getting, uh, the wide receivers were getting held a lot. There was a there was at least one egregious pass interference not called, but but so I can I can throw I can give him a lot of excuses, right? His blocking wasn't as good as he's used to getting. Um, his the the wide receivers getting held and bumped past five yards. There was a lot working against C.J. Stroud in this game, and I do, but I but I all of those excuses aside, one. You have to remain a little more collected, which I think during the late stages of the second quarter, I think he was on tilt a bit. He needs to sort of, you know, center himself and stay composed, which I, again, I don't feel like he was doing. He threw some ill-advised throws at times, um, but with all of those challenges and with all of that working against him, 
He still throws four touchdowns. He still has a 66% completion percentage. Um, yeah. He still has a really, he averages nine and a half per attempt. These are all yeah. still great numbers. Um, yeah, so I, I got to give him like an A minus again for the composure, for some ill-advised throws. We still need to dock. We still need to, I almost said docks, dock him for that. Uh, but mm -hmm. I, I still think he had a very good game. Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, B plus is where I'm maybe B, B plus there. I mean, he, he had two turnovers in this game, which definitely not definitely knock it down here. But it's starting to be a trend we're seeing with CJ Stroud. Is that four straight games with a with an interception now? It's definitely unlike CJ Stroud right now. And it's uh, are we should we be a little concerned? I I don't think so here. Um, I think just, there are times in which we see CJ Stroud place balls into tiny windows. And when that, when it works, we beautiful. all go, wow, he's amazing. And when he yeah. doesn't quite get the ball into that tiny window, we get mad because it's an interception. Yeah. Um, but I think he was a he bad, was a bad miss. Rutgers was a bad read. Sparty was communication. And this one was, I think this one was just a bad throw. I think this was just a bad throw by CJ. And, and we saw it was that, a bad uh, choice and, more than it was a yeah, bad throw. And we, saw, and we saw that a few times too. Like there was one, he had a wide open um, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. That if, if he had it on target there, instead of, he, mi he missed it by a few yards. If it was on target, Marvin Harrison would have caught that in and went right into the end zone there instead of settling for a field goal. Yeah, so, so yeah, but I, I, it's I it all B plus. It all comes down to like little things. Like again, we we look at the first quarter. You have three field goals. A, a slightly better touch pass to Marvin Harrison Jr. turns one of those field goals into a touchdown. One of those field goals, you would have at least had four more chances or th three more chances at a touchdown had a pretty obvious, in my opinion, pass interference been called. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's, we, we can't, we can't get too judgy over stuff that misses by like this much. Yeah. But again, expectations. That's why I gave the grade I did. All right. Offensive line, Jared, moving on to the offensive line, which is probably the big topic. Everybody's been talking about with this game. <sighs> It's it's hard for me to give him a good grade here. Yes, um, I think CJ only had that one sack, which ended up being the fumble that led to Iowa's only touchdown for the game. But man, they, it's it struggled. There was times that the interior of that offensive line just struggled. Um, not so much on the pass protection because I thought I thought the pass protection was fine, but. He Anytime got a lot of pressure in and, his face that he's not used to there, getting. There was, there was, but I'd say just the rushing attack, man, they, if you rewatch that game, there's so many times that interior line just collapsed and the second level of the Iowa defense got in and made all those tackles for loss or tackle right at the line there, which is why you saw 30 rushing attempts, 66 yards, 2.2 per carry. Yeah. It's seem it, it's on on how on how they did with the pass protection and on the on the rush um rushing attack here. I Zach I'd says average, Michigan I'd will feast. I'd, 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 I'd average it to a C. Uh, the, Mi the, Zach says the Michigan rushing. will feast if we don't fix this. Um no, yes. no. Yes. Michigan does not have the defensive tackles that Iowa has. Guys, it's this is not just an Ohio State thing. This is also an Iowa thing. You you can't look at this through the scope specifically of Ohio State. Ohio State will not face a defensive line of, you know, four guys plus a really good linebacking core. They will not face a front seven this good again this season unless they happen to play Georgia. Unless they happen to play Georgia, this is the best front seven they will play all year, period, not close. Yeah, so I, I give the overall 
offensive line a C, Jared? What, what would you give the offensive line? I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a C as well. Um, I thought uh, C minus. I thought Paris Johnson had a good game. Um, I thought, I thought the left side of the line was not was not bad. Uh, but yeah, the interior was was a mess. Um, and I thought Dwan Jones had an okay game. Um, Donovan struggled, did he? I don't think Donovan Jackson struggled that. I, I think it was. I don't. I don't want to name names. But <laughs> I think Paris played fine. I thought Donovan Jackson played fine, and I thought Dwan Jones played fine. And so you can, you can do your own math from there. Um, but you have to kind of average, but you know, but we're, we're not just doing interior and we're not doing individual, um, individual player grades. So I, I think like a C plus, um, because I don't think it was the entire offensive line. Okay. All right. All right, let's we're gonna we're gonna move on to the running backs here. I it's hard for me to give again, kind of like the offensive line. It's hard for me to give the running backs a good grade here. Henderson three point five average, Mayan Williams one point nine per carry, and and yeah, a lot of it because the offensive line uh, couldn't get their blocks too. But I, I felt like there were there were times when they tried to cut it out or they tried to try to do more and they actually lost yardage too. So I, I, I give the running backs probably a C as well for here. I was not really impressed with how well the running backs tried to be equally as physical as the defense was that was coming at them there. So I'd, I'd give the running backs a C. Can I, can I just not grade the running backs? No, you have to Jerry. I, cause look at, they didn't have anywhere to go. Uh, it's almost like an incomplete grade. Yes, spikes. Um, if I if I have to like give them give them a B minus, I suppose. Um, but I I don't know what we could have expected them to do. To be honest, like uh, which host is here to talk and who is here to develop film film like a Polaroid. Uh, moving on. Um, all right. All right. Wide receivers, Jared. Oh, because of the red room. Got it. All right. Wide receivers, Jared. At, I think that this was the, I think this was just the shining light in the offense. <laughs> just A, an A for this, um, for the wide receivers. It's, it's rare that you saw any kind of, um, um, catches or any throws that did not get caught if it hit their hand. Marvin Harrison Jr. had another just stellar uh, grab in the end zone there. Yeah, solid, solid A for the wide receivers. I, I, I don't share your. We, we, we talk a lot about how the wide receivers were held a lot and how they were bumped a lot, even past five yards. But they they have to fight through that better. I think they got stymied by the bump a lot. And I think because Iowa had success doing it, you're going to see other teams attempt to replicate doing it. Now, do the other teams have the players to do that? Not 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 most of the time, no. But they're going to now try. People are going to watch the Iowa film. They're going to see Iowa successfully bumping these wide receivers and other teams are going to try and do the same. Uh, I So, I mean, I think they had a pretty obvious deficiency in their game and obviously not all of them, but we're grading them as a wide receiving group. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know. I give them a B. Okay. All right. And the tight ends here. Tight ends here, we had Stover with two catches and Mitch Rossi got himself a another touchdown here. Uh, G. I, Scott I, had a catch as well. Oh, yeah. Forgot G. Scott did as well. Yeah. Um, 
I I felt yes, I it's always great seeing the the tight ends getting the getting the catches that they deserve here, but I think they're equally responsible for the the run blocking or the lack of that happened here. And I I'd, I'd probably give the tight ends here probably a maybe a B B minus. I'll 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 stick with a B here just because uh you did get a uh Mitch Rossi touchdown here. So I'll, I'll give the tight ends a B. Uh, definitely a lot of work that could be done on the run block side. I give him a C. Um, again, like we always, I always try and say like, man, we got to remember to give the tight ends credit for the run blocking as well. And that has to go both ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Moving on to the defensive side, defensive coaching. A plus, <laughs> A plus. Yeah, <laughs> you you held a team to 158 yards of total offense, 158 yards, and realistically just three points created from the offense. Yeah, A plus. Yeah, absolutely. All right, All right. So Jared agrees there. All right, All right. Defensive end, Jared. Uh, a plus again. Should, should, should like everything here just be an A plus? <laughs> I mean, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Uh we'll we'll, we'll go through it and we'll see. Um, right, defensive defensive ends though. Yeah, I'd give a I give a A plus as well. Uh we got to see uh Harrison just Harrison was just a monster in this game. Absolute you could, monster. You could make the you could make the case that Harrison was the MVP of this football game in many ways, especially early in the game. He was all over the the film. Um, he was he was all over the place as far as just impacting the game. And again, like you look at the stats and you don't necessarily see a lot, but I think that's just a recurring thing we've seen from the defensive ends this year. Although, you know, he does have two tackles for a loss which is excellent. Um, and he does get a sack, which is one of those tackles for loss. He broke up a pass at the line of scrimmage. Uh, but a lot of times you, what gets lost in that is the, how key those, those plays are in the moment. Um, but yeah, this yeah, was also a game where we saw a lot of the defensive ends who weren't necessarily getting their, their stats, get some stats. Caden Curry got half of a sack. I already said Zach Harrison got a sack. Uh, JT got a sack. Uh, Jean Baptiste. Sack yeah. Jean Baptiste gets a sack. Uh, so we, we, you know, we got a, uh, a situation uh, where, uh, you know, a lot of these guys who weren't getting sacks finally played a team in which either, uh, the offensive coordinator didn't plan or didn't communicate the plan to his defensive or to his quarterbacks that you need to get rid of the ball very quickly. Yeah, that that's we, we always talk about the book on Ohio State. And one of the things that's like in the first or second line of the book on Ohio State is you have at max two and a half seconds to throw the ball. Three, three and a half of those five sacks from those defensive lines and. Ohio State had 10 tackle for losses. They have a young O-line. Yeah, no, Matt, absolutely. But Ohio State, so again, we talk about how, like, with, with Ohio State's offensive line, we also need to talk about how good Iowa's defensive line is. Ohio State's defensive line is amazing. You have to realize, as an offensive coordinator, and communicate this to your quarterbacks, you get, like, two reads max. You get like two reads max. And then you got to either get rid of it or run or something. Every other quarterback we've seen play Ohio State. Since. Since the Boses, they've done this. Every single quarterback is basically been get rid of the ball as quick as possible because you have to. Yep. All right, uh, defensive tackles, Jared. I, I think same thing with the defensive end. Uh, defensive tackles had an amazing game, plugging up the I agree. Uh A-plus there. Uh, what was it here? 
um, Iowa, 35 attempts, 77 yards, 2.2 yards per carry. Yeah, a- absolutely a great game by the defensive tackles, A+. plus. Yeah, uh, Cage had uh, one and a half tackles for a loss and half of a sack. Um, even gets two solo tackles from the defensive tackle position when, where it's not always easy to get solo tackles at the, at the DT, but uh, gets five tackles in as a, as a whole. Uh, Jerry on cage had a really sneaky, really good game this game. Yep. All right. Uh, linebackers, Jared. Linebackers. Uh, Tommy Eichenberg gets a touchdown. Uh, Cody Simon had a really big game this game. Um, we, did. we did see a bit. We I, I have to go. I haven't rewatched. I've not. I didn't. Unfortunately, did not get a chance to rewatch this game yet. So I don't know anyone in the chat or maybe people in the YouTube comments. Did Ohio State have three linebackers on the field more in this game than they had all year? Because. I feel like we saw a lot more Cody Simon in this game than we've seen all year. And that's did not come at the expense of Eichenberg or Chambers being on the field. Um, no, no, absolutely. No, there, there definitely was more. There definitely was more three linebackers um, sets in this game, which I mean, what, why not when you, <laughs> when you, which was a thing we talked about on know your enemy. Is this the type of game where they might switch to more of a four, three, yeah, and I mean, and there and there were times too when yeah they, they they only had two linebackers in, but you know that safety really was that third linebacker too. Uh, yeah, it's, we'll, we'll get the safeties. Ransom had a great game, but we'll get the safeties. But yeah, well, Eichenberg five solo ta- five solo tackles and a tackle for loss, seven total ta- tackles. Of course, he gets the uh, touchdown on the interception return, Cody Simon, six total tackles, four of those solos, a sack, two tackles for loss. Cody Simon had a great game this game. Um, And then Chambers still has a really good game, two solo tackles, four total tackles. So absolutely, this felt a little bit more like a Cody Simon game than a Steel Chambers game, at least statistically speaking. Um, But yeah, and Tommy Eichenberg continues to be like, I, I tell you who, who made Amazing. some good plays, even made some great plays here, even though it doesn't really show up in the stats, only had one tackle here. But Chip Trainum actually had had a pretty decent game too when he when he came in. I, I saw a few plays there and yeah, I I really liked what I saw Chip in that game. All right, uh cornerbacks. Moving Chip got a carry corner. too, by the way. What was that? He oh, got yeah, a carry. He did, he did have a carry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, he, fun fact, he had the um, best average <laughs> for running backs. Uh oh. <laughs> One carry for nine yards. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, cornerbacks here, Jared. 11 for 24, 81 yards, three interceptions um, by Iowa's quarterback here. I mean, what? Where did those interceptions Quarter- go? Two, two, two of them did go to McAllister. Uh, which is a safety, but yeah, n- none of those interceptions did go to corners. And then the third but, obviously went to Eichenberg. Mm-hmm, yeah, I, I give the corners a solid A. Like, one one of the things that we've talked about for years, Jared, years. If you don't really hear much about a corner, other than oh he got an interception or oh he just he just laid this uh, receiver down, and you hear Gus chart. Gus Johnson yelling, you got barbecue back here. Yeah. If you, if you don't hear any of that, it, it's usually a, a good thing for the corners. Yeah. Um, but, I, but we have to grade on a, on a proper scale. Kyle, we did a whole know your enemy thing on, on, we recorded on Wednesday, came out on Thursday. We talked about some of Iowa's best receivers. Do you remember any of their names? We just, we literally um, did. We literally just did the show. You and then for what is us yesterday watched an entire football game. Can you name one of their wide receivers? Uh, wide receivers, not tight ends. Right? Yeah, I, yeah, I know what I said. I know what I said. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that's my yeah. point. Like, <laughs> yes, yes, there, there was getting on. That's my point. Like, yes, the cornerbacks had a good game. 
because we basically didn't have to acknowledge them all game exactly what you want from a corner um, and, and you, and you but they but they were not at all challenged okay. this game between the fact that Iowa has no talent at wide receiver to say it very plainly I, I mean and I mean the fact that the defensive line and the linebackers were getting such great pressure on the quarterback that they did even if the wide receivers could get open they never had time to how many how many receptions did their wide receivers have in this game Jared guess Without How many looking. receptions look, did their wide receivers yeah, look at my, get? Look, look, look into the camera, stare, stare into the camera, Jared. Hands up, hands up, hand check. How many, how many receptions did the wide receivers have? What, what, what does everybody in the chat here say? No man says zero. It might uh, be zero. It honestly we, might we got, be zero. I don't remember we got a, one. We got, we got a five in there. We got two. We got a negative five. No man, <laughs> you can't vote twice. Uh, uh, four. 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 Four receptions. That means seven of those to the tight end so sam laporta had six receptions everybody else had one one (laughs) one for the rest of the um of the receptions there yeah so six by sam and then one 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 i i I, I get a a a A for the corners okay all right and safeties a plus a plus here and i tell you i tell you what yes the we talk we can talk all day about how great McAllister had he had two interceptions this game here but did you see who who got to play a lot in this game jared kai stokes kai stokes kai stokes got to see the got to see uh the field a lot in this game how how do we do we actually know like what his snap count was like i know he put up pretty decent snaps uh, or i mean I, excuse me pretty decent stats that. um maybe 15 gangland says kai kai stokes i, I don't rem- remember him playing a lot during the competitive portion of the game um but he is like one of the first guys they throw out there when they start to like slowly rotate the backups in He's gotten some junk time this year, but and I, and I'll go ahead and put him I think in the same conversation with Caden Curry. Whenever they put those guys out there late in games, you notice them right away. Yeah. Kai Stokes, uh Kai Stokes and uh Caden Curry are two future stars at Ohio State. All right, in the last position here, the special teams. Jared did, By the way, hold did, on. I don't want to move away from safeties quite yet. Ransom, eight total tackles, five solo tackles. Uh, was was the top tackle getter on the team. Um, I just I, I had to I need to throw that out there. Like I think his his name also in the conversation for like potential like MVP for the game. Okay. Yeah. No. A- absolutely. Yes. All right. Uh, all right. Special teams, Jared. In this game, did 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 Mirko do better better than Taylor? Did Mirko actually have a better game than Taylor? Because uh, the answer because the answer is yes. Mirko had a better average. Two of his three punts were inside the twenty, and Taylor had five punts, had a lower average per punt, and only one of his five uh, was in the ended up being inside the 20 yard line. And and to be fair, yes, he was Iowa was pin, was pinned back most of the game. But, he was punting he was punting into a larger field if we're being fair. But that that means that he should have been able to have a better average though cuz he had That's a good that point. Field. But Mirko, Mirko out punting Taylor in this game in my But opinion. we also have to talk about Ruggles in a game yeah, in which Ruggles. Ohio State said, "Hey, Ruggles, we need you this game. Delivers. Absolutely four, delivers." Four. Um, and also, no kickoffs out of bounds this game. That's always a good sign. No kickoffs out of bounds. Um, yeah, that is big. <laughs> Stupidly, yes, that's apparently a big deal. Um, kickoff I, coverage. Kickoff coverage was much better in this game here. Yeah, it's, you mentioned Noah Ruggles four for four in this uh, game. Really improved his uh, field goal percentage. I mean, that sixty six percent. Uh, looks a lot better <laughs> after after this game here. Yeah, I I give him an A plus honestly. I've... Yeah, A A plus A plus for me on spe- 
A. I'm going to stick with A. Yeah, <laughs> I know, Kyle. Uh, Abuka had a decent shot at one of those punts. He, he did. If he had that one extra block. Mm. Yeah. All right. All right. And time for our Buckeye leaves here, Jared. Uh, where would you like to start here? Offense? You want to you want to give an offense and Buckeye leaf? I think we always start with the offense. Sure. What would you what would which Buckeye leaf would you give on the offensive side? I'm gonna go, and this one might be a little weird. I'm gonna go Julian Fleming. Um, I, Julian Fleming is starting to remind me of uh of Jamo a lot because like Abuka and Harrison are getting more press. They get more receptions. They get more touchdowns. But just like when Jamo was at Ohio State. If you get too focused, yeah, Buka and, and Harrison are getting more volume. But if you forget about Fleming or Jamo in this in these cases, if you forget about him for one play, he's going to burn your ass. Mm hmm. I got a I got a Paris in the chat here for for their offense uh, Buckeye leave here, uh, and I'll I'll go with the uh, another wide receiver here, and I'll go I'll go with uh, Emeka Buka here. There there was times when you needed that that big time catch, and yeah, you know, you could easily give it to Marvin Harrison Jr. too, but it seemed like a lot of those critical downs Emeka delivered. He had six receptions at eighty yards in a touchdown averaging 13.3 per catch there. I I felt like on critical plays, Ibuka did come up, um, came up big. All right. Um, moving on to the defense. Real quick. Side. Zach says uh, Fleming reminds me of Mac. Mm, um, yeah, a little bit. A I little can, bit. I think I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. All right, uh, defensive side, Jared. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with Zach Harrison. That's probably, probably the, one of the easiest um, choices to choose from. But I'll, I'll go, I'll go with, uh, I'll go with Zach Harrison in this game. Just, just a disruptive um, player, especially early on in the game. I was also going to say Zach Harrison, but since you said that, I'll, I'll, I'll I will audible. Um, I'll audible and I'll switch to Cody Simon. Um, Ohio State's not asked a ton of Cody Simon uh, so far this year. It's been primarily Eichenberg and Chambers. Um, Simon was my favorite linebacker on the team last year. I'll, I'll say that. Um, but when they said, you know, when they turned to Simon and said, hey, you're going to get a lot more snaps this game, he immediately delivers. So give me mm. Cody Simon. All right. And for the wild card, uh, let me let me let me find the uh, let me find the emoji in here, Jared. I'm going to go with Noah Ruggles as my wild card here. Four for four on field goal, six for six on extra points here. He did not struggle in this game. Noah, no struggle. Ruggle, pick six pickles, nothing. I, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Spikes, let me be super honest with you. I feel like I've already handed out a bunch to Eichenberg. That's literally uh, I, Kyle. Kyle took Sp uh, Ky I'm talking to Spikes. Kyle took Harrison. I had to audible real quick. Um, and I was like, oh, should I give it to Eichenberg or should I give it to Simon? And I was like, I've already given a bunch to Eichenberg this year. Let me let me give one to Simon. That was literally my thought process. I mean, he's earned them. Absolutely. He has. Absolutely, yeah. he has. But he's also not going to lose any sleep over uh, which, <laughs> over whether the sleep gas gives him a Buckeye leaf or not. Um, my wild card, I'm going to give to uh, Jaron Cage. Um, five tackles, uh, one and a half tackles for a loss. Gets a sack in this game. Kyle, Nomad wants to know what you're drinking. Uh, nothing now. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Fair. All right. So that's it, Jared. That is our episode here. Overall, uh, very, very impressed with this uh, performance from Ohio State. Beating, uh, beating a 
very good defensive team by 44 points here. The silver bullets, Jared, are back. And oh, let's see they keep it. Let's hardcore. see they can keep it up uh, for next week. And as they head on over to Happy Valley in a not wide out for a change. Are they striping or doing something like that? It's a nooner. They decided they didn't want to do the white out on a nooner, and I, I don't blame they, them. They, they decided they actually wanted to uh, win a game, and so they played uh, Minnesota for their white out last weekend. They looked good. We'll, we'll talk about that on Tuesday, but they looked good in that game. Yeah. Um, um, you got anything else, Jared, before we wrap it up? I, I don't. I don't think. I think I talked about everything I really wanted to talk about this game. Um, yeah. Maybe uh, Caleb Brown got a reception, his the first of his career at Ohio State. Um, and I just want to say once again, because I think it really needs to be said, Iowa has a great defense, and Ohio State scored 54 points. That really needs to be emphasized as many times as possible, so I'll say it one more time. There is another team on the field, and it's not always about Ohio State. Yeah. If you want to, if you, if you have to ask the question, why did Ohio State's offense struggle so bad? It's because Iowa's defense is really good. Period. Now, if you, then you have to ask the question, well, why did Ohio State's offense look so good in the second half? Well, because while Iowa has a very talented starting group, they don't have Ohio State's depth. Ohio State can take out you know, Tommy yeah, Eichenberg some, something that, put in Cody Simon and not have a huge drop off. Yeah, you know what I mean? We talked about too, was how much can Ohio State's offense wear down Iowa? And we saw that there. Right. Uh, uh, the, the one thing, the one thing we did not talk about was, uh, JSN. I just want to say, well, hold on. I want to finish that thought real quick, Kyle. Um, I, I will say this. If, if Ohio State does end up playing Georgia, Georgia does have that depth. You're not mm -hmm. going to be able to pack it on in the second half against Georgia. Um, yeah. But uh, that is the primary difference between a school like Ohio State and a school like Iowa. Both teams can put an amazing uh, starting 11 on the field. Sometimes. Not every year in the case of mm -hmm. Iowa, but they are capable of putting an NFL defense on the field. Iowa is capable of that. And they've done that this year. But the primary yeah. difference is that Iowa can't do it every year. Ohio State can. And Ohio State has quality backups, whereas a place like Iowa does not have that sort of depth where they can play 22 guys on the defense comfortably. Um, Ohio State can play 22 plus comfortably on their defense and a place like Iowa can't. Those are the primary differences. And that's why you see so often in games like this, where it's competitive in the first half, but the team that has depth and can rotate eventually takes over in the second half. That's why you see that play out in college football so much. Yep. Uh, one, one thing we did not even talk about was JSN made his return in the Iowa game, but uh, every, everybody saw it. It looked like he kind of limped off when trying to um, run deep for a pass. And it looked like he tweaked it again is what it kind of looked like. But, but Kyle, but Kyle, Ryan Day but, says he just reached his pitch count. But rule number one, but rule number one, Jared. We know what we saw, Ryan. Yes. Ryan, buddy, 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 buddy. We know, we know what we, we all saw. Love we, we, we love, love you. you. We appreciate you. We're big Ryan Day fans here. We know what we saw. Yep. We know what we saw, but, but yeah, once again, though, Kyle, what, what happened, what would happen to Iowa if they lost a guy, what would have happened to Iowa if they had, and then lost a guy like Jackson, Jackson Smith and Jimba. That's it. That's the end of their offense. Ohio state literally just plugs in a different five-star wide receiver. That's the difference between places like this. Mm -hmm. anyway uh kyle uh uh yeah that's it that's the end of the show make sure to check out our highlights our highlights can be found on youtube on tiktok on instagram we'll we'll, we'll clip out like a minute from a show and, and post a highlight 
Uh, so yeah, check out our TikTok page, our Instagram page, and our YouTube Shorts um, playlist. You can find that playlist at Shorts. Uh, you just go to just search Sloopcast on YouTube. That no one goes to a URL for YouTube. You can just 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 search Sloopcast on YouTube. It's fine. Um, and we're at Sloopcast on uh, Instagram and TikTok as well. Um, that's that's all the plugs I feel like doing. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, no, not really. Not really. It's been, <laughs> I've, I've been trying to look for some, some, um, good things to talk about that. Maybe not Ohio state here, but, um, yeah, I, I don't let's, let's just go ahead and end today's episode. All right. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a Columbus based band called room and board room and board. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Room and Board. Thank you.